All right, so the last exercise that we want to do in terms of creating our own scripts or modifying a script is to um, look at how we might create multiple different spheres. And the concepts we're going to look at are operators and expressions. All right, so this is where we're going to go. Um, instead of creating just a simple matrix, we're going to um, have these spheres have different sizes. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use uh, first operators, which are just um, simple mathematical or comparison tasks. Um, you're probably familiar with these. Um, equals, plus, times, divided by. But also, there's some additional ones that have to do with a comparison, right? Is something less than or greater than? Or can you say if A and B or if A or B, right, to conditionally execute some sort of operation, right? So if you take those operators and you um, build up a slightly more robust um, uh, kind of sequence with plus, minus, etc., uh, we can get into the realm of expressions, which we could just understand as an organization of common arithmetic operations. So you take multiply and um, the uh, square root or something like that, and you can create an expression. What we're going to use is sine. Uh, and sine's uh, a very simple one. Um, it's really easy to uh, wrap your head around what happens with sine. Um, and so we'll take sine, which is a trigon trigonometric operation and create a very simple expression uh, to um, create our spheres differentially as opposed to them all being equal. All right, so um, one thing to note about uh, expressions, right, once we go past plus and multiply, when we start getting into using some trig, uh, we have to bring in the math library into our script, right? So that's a, a library we can access, but we just have to tell Python that we want to use it during the, um, any particular script, right? Um, and then if we take a look at the elements that are inside of these expressions, right, we have numbers and variables, right, 15 and 26. Uh, the variables are storing the result of our expression. We have simple operators like equals, plus, multiplies, et cetera, and um, some slightly more high-level functions like sine, square root, tangent, and the log. All right, so we're going to use sine as a way to differentiate our spheres. All right, so let's go back to um, back to Rhino, and instead of just creating our simple field of spheres where everyone has the same radius, let's define those spheres with differing radii. So, and we're going to do that inside our um, our Python object here. So let's um, open it up, and it's going to be uh, just a very simple operation that we're going to do right here to modify our radius each time we move through the loop. It's out, as I was saying before, um, in the same way that we brought in our RhinoScript syntax library, we also have to import the math library, right? So we're going to, at the top, say import math. <laughs> and then down here, where we define the radius, we want to modify um, this simple equation where radius is just the my radius is just set to radius to include uh, the sine function right so math dot sine that allows us to access the sine function we're going to do i times j and then close parentheses and then times the radius right so we'll still have control of our, with our slider as defining a kind of multiplier for the radius, but the difference is going to come by multiplying i times j and then using the sine function to uh, get a value from that input, right? So the sine of i times j times the radius, right? Hit test. Everything looks good. And now we can see that our spheres are getting created uh, differently as we move through the matrix. Right? So I can increase my number of spheres. <clears throat> right? um, as they're being created, I can change the spacing. I want them to be more spaced or less. 
And of course, I have control over the radius, which is like a multiplier at this point. So we get some really interesting patterns from this. Um, just because we're using I times J and the sign, right? So there's actually a mirroring line here because 1 times 0 is the same as 0 times 1 and vice versa. So we get a kind of repeating pattern with a symmetry on the diagonal just from that expression, right? So you could uh, feel free to try any other uh, of the functions, right? You could try uh, tangent instead of sine. And that gives us very big values. So our radius might need to go much smaller to see what we actually get. Interesting. Um, and any other uh, types of functions, right? Square root, um, etc. Right? I like the sign because it's pretty um, easy to see what's happening. All right. So now we've just kind of built up uh, because we've use multiple operators and a trigonometric function, a little expression to define how our spheres should be um, sized differently in the array. All right. Um, let's take one last second to uh, save this file and address any questions you might have about expressions before we move on to the last exercise. Seems like we're all comfortable with that. So let's move, um, let's move into the last exercise. Okay, so I'm going to save and close. All right. 